Okay, so platter is designed to be a um, well, it's basically a glorified sampler, um, but it's one that should allow uh, gesture generation or gesture or um, gesture manipulation of a, a series of samples in both a fixed medium, i.e., generating sounds for say acousmatic composition or whatever, and for uh, in a kind of performance context. Uh, so live generation of gestures um, using sounds that you've pre-recorded and pre-edited uh, and it works um, <clears throat> once you've opened it uh, the first thing that comes up is a dialog asking you how many clatter units you want to start with uh, they, there are up to 10 that you can use which means you can have 10 banks of sounds and manipulate them all independently uh, we'll start with one but you will be able to generate other units on the fly from within the patch itself. So uh, there are two panels uh, that first come up having done that. Uh, the one on the left is a kind of general controls panel with levels and a record control here. Um, you can choose the number of voices you want. Uh, the reason for this will become apparent and as I say you can add units if you want to later and then there's a kind of direct access to some of the DSP controls that you might need. And then on the right hand side, as I say, that is the clutter unit. Um, there are two modes for this. There's a sample bank mode, which is where you load all your samples. And then there is a uh, kind of control instrument bit, um, which I've kind of dubbed the scrub screen, although it's, there's more to it than that. So um, you can drag and drop uh, a series of sound files, uh, one or two, or you know, um, hundreds, theoretically. Um, or you can drag a folder or several folders, and the uh, patch should be able to cope with that. Um, I have to. Uh, hang on, I have to take my dog out for a pee. Hang on. So you drag uh, a folder that you want to load. I shall drag this one, um, and as I say, it can include any samples that you want. Um, they should have been, they should be sounds that you like, and they should be sounds that have been edited well. Uh, basically, what Clatter does is to, uh, well, it's a similar kind of result to granulation in some ways, or brassage. Uh, but of course, you have you're able to choose the um, the fragments in terms of their envelopes and morphology and so on, because um, you've already edited that in advance. Um, anyway, drag that onto the drop screen and then all of the samples that are going to load will load here um, and then you click on there to load them, which it will do. Um, obviously you need your audio to be on, if it isn't on already, click, click, uh, turn it on and then you can audition these sounds independently here. And once you've decided that you like the sounds that you've imported, you can go onto the scrub screen mode. And the first thing that comes up is uh, there are a series of modes for the screen itself. Um, the, uh, the first one is tiles, and each one of the tiles that comes up and you click on it will trigger one of the sounds that you've imported. And you can tell that the sounds I've chosen. Uh, they've got fairly dramatic um, shapes anyway. So <coughs> clicking on each tile gives you a new sound. Um, and uh, obviously that's represented down here. And you can change the, the overall volume of the output of that, uh, of, of the sounds that you're um, sending. Um, you can also choose the transpositions of those sounds. So. Uh, there are two modes for this. One is diatonic, so you can uh, choose transpositions according to the diatonic keyboard. So uh, we can do it by the octave. If you, don't, if you don't know the sounds already, then this probably won't be obvious at this point, but well, that, that was higher. So as I say, you can, you can trigger the sounds independently, but the idea really is that you can... Clicking around in the screen, you get quite nice sort of performance control over those.
and obviously you can react to the sounds themselves in terms of you know how, how regularly you trigger them. Oh. 